Ever since its complete overhaul last year, the GMC Acadia has been the prototypical mid-size crossover. Due to this, the Acadia has seen a tremendous growth in sales over the past year and is a riveting choice if you're looking for a well-rounded and capable mid-size crossover. So let's go ahead and check out and take a closer look at this 2018 GMC Acadia Denali. As a short wheelbase model of General Motors' new generation C1XX platform, the GMC Acadia is mechanically related to the Cadillac XT5 Chevrolet Traverse and the Buick Enclave. The Acadia's wheelbase is measured at 112.5 inches, while its length is at 193.6 inches, being average in size compared to the rest of the segment. Changes for the 2018 model year are minor, but you will find the addition of a new tire fill alert system that gives you audible and visual warnings to let you know when your tire is inflated all the way, and an automatic heated steering wheel is now on the options list, while a few exterior colors are lost while another one is gained. Our cream of the crop Denali trim comes with all of the bells and whistles, including a full-on perforated leather interior, a surround vision camera system, and 20-inch polished aluminum wheels. Styling of the vehicle is modern and clean, especially with the chromed out front grille on our Denali trim and LED tail lamps and the stunning Iridium metallic. Here's the key fob for the vehicle. Decent looking key fob design. And this is your smart key. You have your lock, unlock, your remote engine start. Very convenient. As well as your power lift gate and then your panic alarm. Like I mentioned earlier, this exterior color of the Acadia is known as the Iridium Metallic, and it's one of the most popular colors for this vehicle. You also do have smart key access on all four doors of the vehicle with chrome accenting around the door handles as well. And these high gloss black door pillars are certainly a nice added styling touch. And you will find the jet black perforated leather interior with white contrast stitching as well as white piping on the seats here and your power driver seat with power recline and power lumbar. All right, stepping on the inside of the Acadia here, the step-in height is pretty low and is even lower than um, its platform mate, the Traverse. You will find that the interior is pretty simplistic but it does feature a modern yet tasteful design and you will find that it does feature many easy to operate controls. But it's just a little on the simplistic side compared to other vehicles in the class and this is nearly a $50,000 vehicle, pretty expensive here. But you do have push button ignition, just put your foot on the brake and hit the button to start. And what you're hearing there is a 3.6 liter V6. Full leather wrap steering wheel. Unlike its platform mates, the Acadia here uses a 6 speed automatic while the Traverse and Enclave use a 9 speed and the XT5 has an 8 speed. But you can shift the vehicle manually if you would like to, but you won't find paddle shifters here. And when you put the vehicle into reverse, this plays your surround vision camera system, which has a top-down view, as well as your rear camera, of course. And this will also have trajectory, as well as guidance lines. And to access the front camera, you have to put the vehicle in drive. And you can actually access this camera anytime you would like, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the headlights and the hazards. Go and check out the exterior of the Acadia. Automatic driver's side window. Let's go and pop up the hood and check out the engine bay. Heated exterior mirrors with your side blind zone alert. And like I said, you have 20 inch aluminum alloy wheels, which come on our Denali trim. Coming up front here, you also find high intensity discharged headlights with LED daytime running lights and front parking sensors and fog lights down below. Power 
running the Acadia here is General Motors tried and true workhorse engine. It's their 3.6 liter V6, which they use in many of their vehicles. It produces 310 horsepower at 6,600 RPM and 271 pound-feet of torque at 5,000 RPM, with EPA estimates being okay, 17 in the city and 25 on the highway, and ours is also equipped with all-wheel drive. And this 3.6 liter V6 is actually your optional powertrain, but most Acadias will be equipped with it. Your base engine on the Acadia is going to be a 2.5 liter four cylinder, which is only available on the base trims for the Acadia. And I recommend avoiding that engine as, as it's very lackluster in acceleration and pretty sluggish. But this 3.6 liter V6 is codenamed the LGX, and they also use it in the Cadillac XT5. And there's also another version of this 3.6 liter V6 that they use in the Traverse as well as the Enclave, and that is called the LFY engine. And that basically adds improved airflow as well as stop-start technology, which this Acadia doesn't have just yet, the stop-start technology. But we'll see what this baby could do when we hit the road later in the video. Pricing of the Acadia starts at the base SL trim level, which starts at $29,995 comes pretty well equipped with a 2.5 liter four cylinder engine, keyless open and start, and a fully leather wrapped steering wheel. Moving on up to the SLE1, that starts at $33,535. That gives you LED daytime running lights and Series XM radio. Moving on up to the SLE2, that starts at $36,155. And that gives you fog lights, a power lift gate, and a heated driver and front passenger seat. You can also go for the all-terrain package on the SLE2 and SLT1 trims, which will give you unique styling enhancements on the inside and out of the vehicle. Moving on up to the SLT1, that starts at $39,435. SLT2, $42,835. And then our top of the line Denali, like how we have here, starts at $45,995. Competitors of the Acadia, you're looking at vehicles in the midsize crossover SUV class. This includes the likes of the Toyota Highlander, Kia Sorento. You can also possibly look at the Honda Pilot as well as the Ford Explorer. However, those are slightly larger vehicles than the Acadia here. And you can also look at the Subaru Outback as well as the Jeep Grand Cherokee. Also do have side roof rails coming to the rear of the vehicle, LED tail lamps. Not for the brake lights, however. And you do have dual exhaust tips and rear parking sensors and a rear window wiper with a rear window defroster. Total vehicle price for our particular model is $51,185. And government five-star safety ratings are looking at an overall vehicle score of five out of five. And the final assembly point for this vehicle is actually in Spring Hill, Tennessee. And EPA estimates, like I said, 17 city and 25 on the highway. Full power accessories, of course, power windows, mirrors, and your door locks located right here. Thanks to the chrome interior door handle, as well as memory seat settings for two people. With the base 2.5 liter four cylinder being an essential for the Acadia, the 310 horsepower 3.6 liter V6, which most Acadias are going to be equipped with, is the recommended go-to choice here. And it delivers sufficient power and is able to crank out a zero to 60 time of just 6.1 seconds. While certainly not a thrill seeker, it is equivalent, roughly equivalent to many other vehicles in the mid-size crossover segment in terms of acceleration. In this day and age when many vehicles are going towards eight-speed automatics, the Acadia sticks with a fairly old-school six-speed, but it does a phenomenal job at providing smooth and very consistent shifts. And that can't be said about General Motors' eight-speed automatic. Handling is certainly not the Acadia's expertise here, but it is aided by the optional continuously variable damping system that we have on our Denali trim. And it makes it much more composed around corners. Where you will find the Acadia to be very appreciated is in its very comfortable ride quality that delivers the car-like driving experience that you would expect out of a modern day crossover. And you never feel fatigued after 
driving on a long road trip with this vehicle and it certainly has a very relaxed nature and vibe to it. Interior quality in the Acadia is decent, but wouldn't necessarily say that it's class leading. Nevertheless, there's plenty of soft touch materials in all of the necessary places, including on the door panels here, as well as on top of the dashboard. And you also do get this decent looking wood grain interior trim that runs throughout the whole entire cabin. And this nice stitching on the dashboard certainly gives it a more premium vibe inside of here. Additionally, the steering wheel design is pretty good looking and this is the same setup that you'll find in many of other General Motors vehicles unsurprisingly. And on the left side here you'll find your cruise control. We also do have adaptive cruise control by the way which comes with the technology package on the Acadia. And you really have to step up to a much higher end trim level just to get adaptive cruise control which is a little disappointing. You also do have your automatic heated steering wheel and then your uh, for collision alert, you can adjust the gap for that as well as the adaptive cruise control as well. Over here we also do have your controls for the configurable display which is an 8 inch configurable display too. And then you also do have your power tilting and telescoping steering wheel with a pretty good range of adjustment. And then here is your buttons to adjust the illumination for the interior lighting as well as your electronic parking brake. Automatic dimming rearview mirror, your OnStar with SOS Safety Connect, sunglass container, and your sunroof with your sunroof controls. Glove box compartment. Down here we have dual zone automatic climate control with your adjustable fan speed levels, different zones of course, and your adjustable temperatures. You also have your front window defroster, rear window defroster, and your recycling mode. Three stage heated and ventilated front seats for the driver and the front passenger. Plenty of storage down here with two USB charging ports, auxiliary input, and a 12 volt power outlet. And we have dual cup, holder, cup holders as well as your all wheel drive mode selector and then your parking sensors off button as well as your lane departure alert system button too. And decent amount of center console storage. It is pretty deep. Like I mentioned earlier, we do have a 12 inch configurable display here that's controlled on, by the buttons on the right side of the steering wheel here. You have your coolant temperature, fuel gauge, as well as your battery voltage on the right and your oil temperature as well as your tachometer on the left. In the center, I will display various amounts of vehicle information such as your off-road departure angle, your transmission fluid temperature, your timer which you can start and stop at any time you'll like, and then your MPG from the last 50 miles which will give you your average as well as your best, then your tire pressure monitoring system, fuel range, oil life percentage, and trip A and B for your trip information. And then you also do have an analog setup for your speedometer too. And if you come to audio here, you can change your audio source if you would like from here. Then we have your phone, which you can hang up and answer calls to. Then your navigation system, which will show you turn by turn directions. And then you have a little mini map as well. Then other options that you could change from the units from US to metric, the software information, you also have a speed warning which you can set if you would like. And then info pages, you could turn certain things off like such as the fuel range or oil life or the fuel economy. And then you could change the display theme from touring to sport if you would like, which will give you a whole different looking setup. But overall, this 12 inch, I mean 8 inch configurable display is certainly a good looking display with crisp and clear graphics here. Let's get to the main head unit and interface here. This is the 
8 inch color touchscreen display and it's a GMC IntelliLink system very familiar here and this is your home screen your different audio sources do include all of the norm including AM, FM, XM, satellite radio your presets located down on the bottom as well as your external media devices including a USB charging port with iPod integration and Bluetooth as well as your auxiliary input. What I also love about the radio is that you do have the direct tune feature which is very convenient so you don't have to tune through all the different radio stations. And then we also have an 8 speaker Bose premium sound system which provides plenty of bass. You also have your phone, but you have an integrated dial pad, as well as you can uh, your voicemail, then you have your recent calls, you can hear your voicemail if you like, if you just call it right there, and your contacts, and then your, you can hook up multiple Bluetooth devices onto the system. And we have your projection feature for your Apple CarPlay as well as your Android Auto capability. We're going to go ahead and do that right now. Do is have to plug in the phone here with the USB cord. You go straight to your projection feature. And since I do have the iPhone, we have the Apple CarPlay, of course, which it basically displays what's on the phone onto the system, which is pretty cool. And you have your phone on here, and you have your Siri too. And then your music, as well as your maps. And your text messages, which you can hear them out loud on t from the system. And then your podcasts, audiobooks, iHeartRadio, Radio.com, TuneIn Radio, any apps you have on there for like streaming music. And then you also have your navigation system, which you can enter in your destination by voice if you would like, and it'll show you your points of interest, live traffic, and you can change your different map views, and then you have your navigation voice preferences, OnStar as well, of course you have to have a subscription service, which you can talk to a live person to get directions or anything like that. And then your text messages, which will bring you straight into the Apple CarPlay system if you have your phone connected. And then your weather, which will give you an hourly forecast, a five-day forecast. And you could change your location as well. And you could um, also configure your weather alerts. And you have your weather advisories too. And settings for the system like the time and date, rear seat reminder, language, valet mode, your teen driver feature, which you can monitor the driving habits of your teenager, radio, vehicle, and settings for your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And over here you have your rear climate, your camera, which you can access at any time you would like. You can control your rear climate functions from here. Traffic, which will give you an incident list from your nearby location. And then your downloadable apps too. But overall, you'll find that the GMC IntelliLink system very intuitive and responsive and user friendly, and it offers all the latest technology. Interior quality does follow through in the rear. Still, plenty of soft touch materials on the door panels back here, and you'll find captain's chairs for the second row you can go for bench seating but you have to go for the lower end trim levels for the Acadia and the seats also do fold by pulling up on this and you'll also find 39.6 inches of leg room as well as 39.7 inches of headroom being comparable to many other mid-size crossovers in the class. We also do have the Skyscape sunroof back here. Which you can open up the shade manually and then LED map lighting as well as your rear climate controls back here, heated rear seats, 120 volt power outlet and two USB charging ports for the children 
and little storage bin as well as dual map pockets the seats themselves back here are really comfortable especially for second row seats and provide plenty of thigh support and you have these armrests that you can fold down too and access into the third row is excellent with you just walk right in the middle which is very convenient now the third row is a little bit of a different story back here. Not a whole lot of leg room. And the headroom is decent, but leg room is a little tight back here. But you can adjust the second row seats forward and aft. You can slide them forward and aft for greater comfort for the third row. But you also find a third USB charging port back here, as well as cup holders too. Very convenient. and LED map lights back here. All right. You have your power lift gate. With all the seats folded down in the Acadia, you're looking at a maximum of 79 cubic feet of cargo space. And then the third row seats also do fold down 50-50 split by pulling on these and then pushing the seat right down. You also find a 12 volt power outlet back here as well. So with this comfortable interior, refined driving dynamics, and intuitive technology, the 2018 GMC Acadia is a pretty compelling choice for a mid-size crossover. However, if you are looking one for a bit of an edge, one that stands out a little bit, you may want to check elsewhere. So remember that this is Cameron Birch from Cameron's Car Reviews.